Right, welcome back to the final part of our big red 300 semi-restoration. It's not going to be a showroom finish, but it's going to be a damn good quad when it's done. We're going to just jump, jump straight into it because we've got a lot of work to do. I have her jacked up at the minute, and the reason she's jacked up is we have to take these drums off, and we're going to put a new set of brakes in this. At the minute, we have absolutely zero brakes. So I'm going to have to figure out why there's no pressure here, why there's a problem here or a problem down the brakes, or maybe she's just completely empty of fluid. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to strip off this hub and we're going to replace these brakes. Well, they're too long anyway. <laughs> it's a length of them. Jesus. There we go. Well, they're actually not that bad. They're in very good style actually, but they're probably hardened. I'd say it's a long time since they were changed, but they're certainly not worn down. But we're going to change them now anyway. To so change these, you just turn this lad here. Around like that, that little clip will come out. Same here. That little clip will come out. Now we've got a wee spring here we need to loosen. There's that. That should pop off. Ah. That's it, that's our brake pads off. Just clean the thing up a wee bit, wee bit of brake cleaner. Okay, straight back in our pins. That's the set of brake shoes on. Now you can adjust them afterwards when the hub is on uh, through a little hole. I'll show you in a little while where it is. But uh, that's it, that's your brake pads on. So this little lowering is completely gone here. It's not that it does a whole pile, but still, that is completely shot. So we'll put a new one on there. That looks like our job there. There it is. You know me and me grease. Just a small wee bit will help that hub to go on. So on these brakes, there's a little inspection plug that you can pull out like that. And you can go in with a screwdriver then through that hole and you can move these here just to adjust your brakes in and out. Now I'm gonna let these in a wee bit because the hub just does not want to go on. So I'm just gonna let them in a little bit on both sides, kind of trying to keep it as even as possible. Very simple thing to do. It's actually a good design. You can just do it without taking the hub off. And as your brakes, where you can let them out a bit. Go on, get in. There we are. All this has to do is put a split pin in, see which one of these work. A little bit loose. Perfect. Not gonna put the plug back in just yet. I'm going to adjust these brakes when I have the other side done. So that is it. That's how you put on a set of brake shoes. I'm going to do the far side now off camera and then we'll pick it up from there. All right, we just can't move on that quick. I'm starting to figure out now what might have been wrong with our brakes. And I have a feeling someone let the fluid out of them on purpose. Now this one was seized and the reason it was probably seized is because your hub was missing that plug. And it was probably filling with water all the time. Look at the shape of that inside. It's not that it's badly corroded it's just it's just all gunk and stuff from the water lying in it the pads oh they're completely well look at yeah these here were seized now i'm after taking them out it's not hard to take them out they just pull out like that there and i'm after taking them down to the vice i'm after loosening them all out with wd-40 they all work now and adjust um, and I'm after giving it a bit of a clean. I'll give it more of a clean with some brake fluid now in a second But this hub here I have to take it down and clean that dish a bit of wire wool will do the job just to get the shine back on it Hub is lovely and clean now I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but well, it's clean There's back to raw steel as the new brake shoes start to wear in they'll reshine that whole surface But it's clean now. It's back to raw steel and nothing's gonna contaminate her new shoes 
Right, we're just out on this here now, it's the following day. I've just removed the lid of this now, this little nut wrong, but there's an awful lot of sludge in that reservoir and just as I expected, there wasn't a drop of oil in it. So I removed this pipe and this outlet here is completely stuffed with just oil and muck and dirt. It's like as if there was water in it or something. But the reason why the oil probably wasn't in it because this wheel here would have seized up and Every time you would have pulled this lever, it probably would have locked this wheel tight. And I'd say they let the oil out of it, just so in case anyone would pull it, nothing would happen then. That's what I'm thinking, um, because that has been empty a long, long time. You'd know there wasn't oil in that a long time. And now that wheel is freed up. I managed to rob a part of the other parts quad, that little rubber hole there, which seals that, stops any more water going into that hub, because that's what caused the whole problem. Go through a flood, any bit of water at all, or even wash the quad, water would go into the hub, sit on the shoes, and then just solid everything up. And that, to me, is what caused the whole problem with the front brakes. I have a spare one of these on the parts quad, but I might need it. I'm just going to have to clean this thing out properly. I left it soaking last night in carburetor cleaner, in the hope that it would clean it all out. So I'm going to blow it out in an airline now. We're going to try to put the whole thing back together, some fresh oil, bleed the brakes, and hopefully that'll be our problem solved. Good and clean now. That little inspection hole is there for checking the levels in the oil. I'm going to give that a little bit of a clean because that might look like it's perished or whatever, but it's not. It's just dirt. That's all that is. The next thing I have to do is get this little nut out. I've been soaking it last night in WD-40. I'm going to show you a little trick on how to get these out. So the idea here is you put a little nut over the stud and you try to weld the nut to the stud. So you can see the well on top of the nut is an 8mm nut. Take it easy, I'll have to ring it again. And that is how you loosen the stud the easiest way. Out she comes. Hook this back up, put some fresh oil in, and hopefully, fingers crossed, when we bleed the system, this will work. We're back, and it's several months later. We had to take a break there just for a wee while till we calve our cows and calving season kicks in. A lot of this work has to sit in the corner until the free time comes available again because when calving season comes, that's it. There really isn't any time to be working on projects like this. The next phase is the wheels. And the first thing you're gonna notice on our wheels is we have a set of new tires. The rims themselves were in bad condition and they were really bad condition. We took off the old tires and they were all rusted inside. They were nearly at a stage where we were going to replace them. Two of which on the left hand side were really bad. The two on the right hand side were remarkably a lot better. I don't know why that was, but that's the way they were. But we managed to tear into them. I have a wee pot sandblaster. I didn't fill them and I wish I had it, but a wee pot sandblaster that I bought cheap as chips back a good while ago and a little bit of fine sand that came with it. Hooked it up to my 200 litre compressor took into it and I was remarkably surprised how well it done. I didn't, I thought it was one of those things that just yeah, a bit of a gimmick. It wasn't a lot of money, but it worked incredibly well. So we're gonna wheel this outside so you can see it in the sunlight. So sandblasted, so it removed every bit of paint and rust that was on the rims that were badly rusted, uh, no doubt about it. And that left a lovely smooth finish and a great key to put on some primer. So we two coats of extra primer and then rattle can silver paint. We put three coats of paint on and then two coats of lacquer on top of that. And we got an incredibly good finish for a rattle can job. No drips. I've seen some disasters with my paint work. And this was much harder to put on than it is to take off. Really took a long time to get this all masked up. There we go. These are the studs, they were really, really rusty when I took them off. So what I've done with them is I wire wheeled them, cleaned them up, got a nice shine on them, and then I just lacquered them. Put two coats of lacquer on top of that, and that left them very clean looking, an awful lot better than what they were, and it'll hopefully seal them enough that they'll not rust as quick again. Next thing I have to do here real quickly is put back in these Honda caps. These are the original Honda caps that came with it. So just pop them back into place. I'm just gonna use a punch here to push it in. You use a screwdriver, you'll find it'll push through it. And these, believe it or not, they're quite expensive to buy.
just as Hudson's after taking the ball back to me here for about the tenth time. Um, he does love his ball. There she is, out in the well, we're not say sunlight, out in the dull grey sky. But what we end up with is a very clean, fairly original um, Honda 300 Big Red two wheel drive. And these are getting fairly rare now, especially in the two wheel drive. You don't see them very often, and anytime you do see them, they're normally sitting in a scrap heap somewhere or been really, really abused and beyond nearly saving, which this one was when it came to us, it was on that borderline. It needed everything done to it. Um, so what we did do to this quad, as you remember back, we've a new axle now in it, a full new axle, new brakes all round. We have our new wheels, of course, and the engine has had a full top end rebuild, new pistons, seals, everything done in there, new cam chain as well. And we're lucky to get a second hand cam chain tensioner, which is quite hard to get. Um, but we got a good one that worked. The frame was the biggest job by far. Um, it required a hell of a lot of work, but now we have a frame that isn't patched, it's fully replaced on the neat. I am confident we'll get a long, long time out of that. These tires are called Mud Light, IPT stamp, a Mud Light tire. I got these from Kirby Ireland. They were sponsored to us from Kirby Ireland. Kirby has worked with us with our Lions tires. Um, they are the main exclusive um, importer of Alliance tires and they're based in Dublin That's where the warehouse is and they contacted me and told me that there were supply tires for this quad So a huge thank you to them. They have been great supporters of our channel from day one and we've worked with them for a long time now And we hope to continue to work with them maybe in the future. The last tires I had on were Carlisle tires on the 500. Now the tires that are on the Yamaha are Kenya Bear Claw which a lot of people really like um, be interested to see how they go, they are a hell of a tyre but the Kalyle tyres that we had on the Honda 500 were out on their own I absolutely loved them because we had such wear out of them they weren't wearing down like the tyres we used to have other times I've said that a few times before I did want to get the Carlisle tyres for this unfortunately with the size it just wasn't an option it is only a 9 inch rim so that left it pretty much impossible to get the Kalyle tyres so these were recommended to us from Kirby and said that you will enjoy these every bit as much as you enjoyed your Carlisle. So that's them, mud light, and they're 25, 12, nines on the back, and 23, the eight, the 11s on the front. Because they were sponsored to us, there will be a link in the description. If you guys want to go and check them tires out or want to find out more about Kirby Ireland um, yourself. The only other thing I don't like about it, really don't like about it, is that seat. I know a lot of you said the same. That seat has been changed. But we will change that for black, it will lift the quad it will match in because that's a different red compared to the quad and it just does not look it doesn't look right with this quad there is a bar that comes across here and latches in there that you can lift open to open this and then just close when you're not using it it allows you then to put whatever you want across this without anything hitting on top of the plastic that bar is down in the shed because i'm putting the box onto this quad the same as was on our yamaha just the old box that came off um our last 500 i still have it in there in the shed and it's going back on this one problem we do have with at the minute is our battery. Our battery is completely dead. Now I bought that brand new that battery about four months ago and we did have this quad started and he used to follow us TikTok or Instagram where they've seen the quad started and taken over. Runs like a dream. I will show you it now very shortly. But the battery is now dead, completely dead and I went to charge it and it won't charge. It won't take a charge. So I'm dropping it down just to a local car shop. They have a thing called a smart charger which might be fit to bring it back to life. Might be just the fact that the thing is dead, completely dead and won't take a charge. So I can't start it with the electric start, but it does work, it works flawless. We put a new solid night relay into it as well. It was clicking a bit, so we have a brand new one of those in it. We kept the original lights. We replaced this one, it was cracked and that's the original one that was on it. It has the same Stanley logo down on the side of it. There are an LED upgrade for these, but it requires you to bolt in a whole new light and it looks to me it looks hideous and it just completely spoils the original look of the quad so I'm going to leave them exactly as they are they're not powerful lights but this quad will not be out much at night and I think it looks better the way it is and um, the front is fully rebuilt as well with the steering and all it's as solid as solid can be now there's no play whatsoever in it I've got this cover on eBay that covers up the kickstart and this is the issue we have here the kickstart is tied back because when this engine was rebuilt a little mistake was made just overlooked was before this case was put on the spring for the kickstart was put on backwards 
which means the kickstart is pulling forward instead of pulling back. So when you kickstart the quad, you have to pull it back by hand. Otherwise, it'll stay in this position and you'll hear the gears all clacking together because the kickstart is engaged all the time. So I have to tie it back to keep it out of the way. The actual job itself of reversing the spring isn't a big issue or isn't going to take an awful lot of time to do. It's just the fact of stripping it all down just to get in there and rectify that. Little button on the carburetor of these, which is very handy, just to prime it to get it running. So we'll just give it two or three little presses of that. Now you can see you have to pull the kickstart back up by hand. Almost. That hasn't been started in about three months and it only took three kicks there to get the thing to run without any choke. And you can hear it on the camera, hopefully it picks it up the way that the sound was that is as smooth as smooth can be. It's poor like a kitten. No clicky clacky noise now. Your little rev. We did fully clean out the carburetor. I didn't put a rebuild kit into the carburetor. All I done was take it apart, put it into an ultrasonic cleaner, and that was it. There we go, our lights are working regardless of having no battery. And then we put on our full lights. And there's our LED light on. So we're back and that was a successful i would say a successful little drive and um, there are a few things like the brakes that are very weak on it i'm going to adjust them now i'm going to tighten them a little bit and every time i take them out for a little bit of a spin i will give them a little bit, a bit of a tightening and they will bed in that won't take very long but it drives really smoothly the engine sounds really good the gear change is swift and smooth cannot fault it in any way the only thing is there's a little bit of blue smoke starting to come from it now some might be alarmed by that i'm not i have built engines myself before and you will always get a bit of blue smoke for a while that's just from a bit of residue that can be laying in the exhaust and also on the head after the head been rebuilt and that can take time just to burn off i will keep an eye on it i don't see anything there that's out of the normal of engines i would have rebuilt myself but it sounds absolutely great i love the sound of it uh, the next time you see it it will be starting on the battery uh, this will become obsolete because you shouldn't really ever have to use that and um, we'll get that battery sorted either a new battery or we'll get that one charged properly with a smart charger hopefully it'll come back to life another little thing i want to do with this is i want to weld in a little bit of a i don't know something come across here like a bit of a foot well that you can stand here without your foot either slipping off this and going down and maybe you know breaking your ankle or something on that it is quite open that's the way these quads were designed the later versions came with a foot well so it's only a matter of bringing a bar out here clearing the brake pedal going underneath this it'll straighten the whole thing up as well and just somewhere you can rest your foot or it just stops your foot from slipping down underneath i don't know if you've seen this cross member here but this runs the whole way across it's bolted to the actual frame of the quad it runs straight over there and comes out the far side and it really gives the plastics its full strength that was completely rotted away so all i done was took a lot of time but all i done was to bend this one exactly the same this is a solid bar rather than a hollow bar it's just an air rod for electric vents and i managed to bend it exactly like the other one weld on new hinges onto it and that solid that up that'll never move again hope you enjoyed this maybe not so little build i certainly did it's back from the scrap heap it's got a whole hopefully another life ahead of it and we're glad to have it we look forward to using it anyway guys thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one and just to show you at the very end new battery in mission on
Boom.